Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion. It's a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective, including the nuances from me, Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Our nuances are what like bring the sparkle to the Reformed Baptist faith. Sure. Yeah. The sparkle. What nuances? Just us. Just what do you mean? Like yeah. just in general? Yeah, like in everything. Like we we've got the we've got we're, we're confessional, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we're, we're particular Baptist, mm-hmm. we're Reformed Baptist, mm-hmm. but we're also us. And so like you little little sparkle. You that, take so you, the sparkle is us. Yes, we are the sprinkles on the Reformed Baptist cupcake. I don't mm-hmm. think I want to be the sprinkle. Why not? I don't know. What do you want to be? It's like messy. Sprinkles are not messy. Yes, they are. The frosting is messy. The sprinkles stick to the frosting. Uh, they don't go uh, anywhere. Uh, uh, yes, no, it's like it's, it's not organized. It's just blah. Yeah, exactly. Like our podcast. No, blah. that's you. Blah. 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 That's pretty good. Uh, I like you got your summer shirt on. It looks summer good. Shirt? Yeah, I like it. I yeah, actually like well, it a lot. Well, well, look, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah, but it's frustrating because it's stinking cold outside, mm-hmm. and I was I was getting hot. It was getting warm, and I was getting ready to yeah. start hating summer because uh-huh. there's a lot to hate about summer, and uh, and I like complaining about that. So, and then it, it took it away. God took away my complaint. I can't complain. Oh, about, is that, that why you're upset? You're upset because you can't complain. Oh my goodness. I was, you know what I was going to start complaining about? Because the thing I hate the most about summer more than any, hmm. anything. Hmm. Ooh, flip-flops. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. I'm not a fan of the flip-flops. I hate flip-flops. First of all, they're gross and ugly. Their, their use is uh, in communal showers. Flip-flops are mm-hmm. appropriate there. Mm-hmm. At the beach, you're trying to get to the beach and get back. That's mm-hmm. fine. Don't mm-hmm. care. Even going to the pool. But the thing is, I hate that. That sound. It's like, you're, it's like, it's like oh, I wear these no, because it's like, it's like. Yeah, it's like, but it's like they get, it's like flap, slap. It's like a slapping noise. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you give yourself it applause. Wet, it's but like it sounds get, wet. Yeah, you get applause everywhere you go. Like people are there, clapping. It sounds wet because there's suction. Ugh, so gross. It's coming off your foot. And I see some guy like at Chipotle wearing flip-flops. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Look at the flip flops. We're on. trying to eat here. Yeah, like Birkenstocks are gross enough, but at least it's a it's a it's footwear. Mm-hmm. I, I I can stand behind that. Flip flops, no way. Hmm. Hate hmm. hate flip flops. Hmm. Oh, I got to complain about it anyway. There so you go. Funny. Yeah, now you feel better, don't mm. you? You feel better that you got to complain. Well, you know what? Listen, I don't get to do it a lot, so uh, complain. You know, you don't. What do no, you do? I don't. Not enough. you do it all should, the time. But not enough. I, I you know what. Agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like complaining is like uh, it's like breathing. Mm. I don't breathe. Mm. I don't live. So what do you got going on today? You know, uh, well, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, my dad asked me, what's the holiday this weekend? I'm like, there's no holiday this weekend. What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, there is. And my dad's mind doesn't remember a lot of mm-hmm, stuff these mm-hmm. days, you know. And, and I'm like, I, obviously neither does yours. No, I, my, I've, I've, I checked out a long time ago. I'm like, nah, I don't think so, dad. <laughs> <laughs> we both were sitting there, a couple of dummies looking at each other like, look at <laughs> and he was right. He was right. There, yeah, it's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, I'm going to grill. Nice. Um, we're going to be grilling mm-hmm. and doing that kind of a thing. Uh, took the kids to see a scary movie this weekend. Mm-hmm. So that was good. Went and saw, what did we see? We Quiet saw, Place 2. Quiet Place 2. Uh, it was really good. A lot of fun. Good time. And uh, yeah. So I think that's about, yeah, that's all mm. I'm going to do. I don't think I'm doing anything else. Mm. Yeah. Why? What are, what are you doing? What do you got going well, on? Well, I'm going to, you know. Honor those that have fallen. Yeah, but and 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 how? You know, the parades. There's there's ways of. Going so you're gonna out. go to the parade. You know, yeah. Are you yeah. going to the parade? I might watch it. You're not gonna go to the parade. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's you know, fine. but I mean, you could just go flip your burgers. It's okay. Yeah, and the bird. What to the devil? What is wrong with I'm you? I'm just saying. I will probably spend some of the day, and I'm thinking because I'm preaching next week. Yes, you are. So two witnesses. Yeah, and I got Fire. a busy Tuesday through Friday, so I was like, "Ooh, I'm gonna try to get a jump start Monday." Yeah, good, good. You should come and hang out with me. Uh, I need, I got a jump start. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I, All I do is study on Monday. I know you're gonna be. Here. What? Yeah, you won't. Ha- you won't be doing that this Monday. Yeah, well, I still have to do it. I'm preaching, so how? Because you, I teach and preach all the time. I do week. I do midweek message. You just don't want to be home. I do want to be home, but there's nowhere for me to be when I am home. There's nowhere to go. I can't lay down on the couch at the end of a long day because I've got two dogs and one of the kids on there. There's no recliner. I don't have a lazy boy. Mm. We have these upright, like, you know, gr- grandma chairs mm-hmm. in there. Like, I, 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 like if, I have, if I'm going to lay down, I have to go upstairs and go to bed. That's not good. I can't do that. Oh, so, my gosh. so this is like, this is where you come to relax. You know what my wife does? She, she doesn't sit in, in ever. She stands in the kitchen. 
she stands all day. If, she, if she's home, she's standing, she's working, she's doing stuff. Or if she is going to watch something, uh, she'll watch it while she's standing and like doing dishes. She, she, I don't, I rarely see her sitting down until about eight o'clock at night. Man, you run a tight ship over there. That's no, that's her running the tight ship. I don't run anything. No, I swab the deck maybe <laughs> if she tells me to. She's the captain. She's captain and commander. Oh, is that oh. right? Captain? No, it's not captain. What Cap is it? Are you talking about the movie? Yeah. I think it's Captain and Commander. The Lord, what? Is, captain and Commander? No, that doesn't Commander sound right. No, it's Captain and Commander. Is it? Yeah. With Russell Crowe. All right. I don't remember. It sounds funny to me now. It does sound funny. Captain and Commander. Isn't that the name of the movie? Master and Commander. Master, Master and, and Commander. Commander. Okay. That's it. I knew that was wrong. We were we were on the right track. That's a good movie. That is a great movie. Yeah. I had to watch it all the time. Yeah. Oh, because of school or what? No, 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 no. Why did you have to watch it? My father-in-law got a sailboat all the time around the house. All Wait. the time. The guy wanted to watch Master and Commander. Had to watch it three, four times. Your father-in-law. Father-in-law, yeah. When he bought a Do sailboat. Do all of your father figures have boats and ships? Like, what is this? Yeah. What the heck? What? Yeah. You live in a different world, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, George. <laughs> mm. So we had to put on our deck shoes. What's his name? Thurston? Thurston. Uh, Thurston Howell? <laughs> Kenneth. <laughs> it is Kenneth. No, Thurston. No, no, I'm talking about yeah, my father. My father-in-law's Kenneth. Saying, yeah. Gilligan yeah. reference. It's pretty good. Yeah. Felt, so yeah, Master good. Commander had to uh, watch that. And then- uh, That's a good movie, though. What's the one with Johnny Depp? Friday the 13th. Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. That's not good. Man, and he dressed up like like Jack Sparrow for three, four Halloweens in a row. Oh, Thurston did? Yeah. Wow. I'm like, he would just walk around, oh, trying to be like, oh. <laughs> and he's like, I'm so funny. I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Michelle, he ain't invited to the Halloween party no more. Yeah. You should dress up like, uh, like Johnny Depp in 21 Jump Street. That's what you should do. <laughs> I think that would be good. That would be good. That's a good look. So, Joey, what are we, what are we looking at today? Uh, we're in question 90 of the Baptist Catechism. Hmm. And I know you guys like to get the Baptist Catechism. A lot of you are looking for it. You want to get a good copy. We always link to a good copy of the Baptist Catechism. It's the, it's the confession and the catechism in one. Um, and the, the company that produces those, they sell out pretty quick. But in early June, they should have like 1,900 in stock. So if you're looking to buy some, check out our links and uh, you can pick them up. All right, Jimmy, we're in question 90 today. What are we looking at? We're looking at, uh, where is it here? You here said you, you had it. You said I did, you had, I had, I had it. I said you the link and you're I like, no, it. I've got it. I had it. Okay. What does God require of us that we may escape his wrath and curse due to us for sin? Mm. To escape the wrath and curse of God due to us for sin, God requireth of us faith in Jesus Christ, repentance unto life with the diligent use of all outward means whereby Christ communicateth to us, the benefits of redemption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, some people might read that and go like, wait a minute, that sounds like a little much. Sounds like a little complicated. I thought all we had to do was believe. Just believe. Believe. Now, yeah. Believe when you can achieve. Now, now, we, now we got we got faith. We got repentance. And we got use. <laughs> means, use of yeah. outward means. Like, I don't understand what's going on here. But I think the thing to keep in mind here is, uh, one, yes, God calls us to faith, right? But uh, faith includes and gives birth to repentance. Uh, mm -hmm. Those things are distinct but they're never really separated from one another and the diligent use of all outward means uh is that which by we experience the benefits of redemption and so you know growth sanctification uh peace all of those things that we long for to be more conformed to the image of christ and that's why those are included in here so that even we don't want to just escape god's wrath i mean mm -hmm. paul talks about that some escape as through fire right like just <laughs> like they got saved but they didn't really do much they yeah, didn't really yeah. use the outward means um but we want to be conformed to christ's image so i think that's why we've got a, a fuller picture here i think this is really Really good. Well, let's talk about this. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about wrath and curse and how all sins deserve God's wrath mm -hmm. um, in this life and in the next. But the way of escape is faith. Faith. Yeah. Well, well, faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, so not just like ah, I believe. Faith. Yeah. No. No. You no. Know. It's like it's faith in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah. In His life, His death, His resurrection. Uh, believing that that He is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. That He is God Himself. That. Uh, Everything that Jesus said about himself, uh, everything that Jesus did, you believe and you have faith in that, in his saving work. I like that you said that. Like, 
and obviously it's like, we think, like, well, of course it's obvious, but it's not to so many people because even a lot of church going Christian folk talk about faith as if faith is the thing that saves them. It's the instrument by yeah. which we lay hold of Christ, but your faith isn't your salvation. And people talk about it like that, right? Like, oh, my faith really got me through it. Mm-hmm, now, mm-hmm. maybe they mean their faith in Christ. I mean, that's that, yeah, give people yeah, the yeah. benefit of the doubt, but sometimes people really believe that faith is this force. Like, you know, it's like the force. I can move mountains. Yes, you can. uh, I can tell to jump into the sea. You can raise the X-wing from the swamp with the force. (sighs) Right? You should like that. You're a nerd. You like that stuff? I'm I'm not. Okay, I'm a nerd. Star Wars nerd. You're not like a, you're not like a, (laughs) you're not like that kind of a nerd. Oh my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) I do know the universe pretty well. (laughs) (laughs) You always, and you, but what I like about your knowledge base of Star Wars, because it, uh, it's not as deep as your knowledge of scripture, but it's probably second to that. Um, I like that you only, peekaboo when you open the kimono of your knowledge of the star. You just like, boop, boop, you show a little bit and, and then, like, oh, like, oh, you got a lot under there and you're like, yeah, don't yeah, worry yeah that's it. We're just going to leave it there. We're just going to, we're just going to bury it deep. I had to bury it deep in high school. I'm going to bury it deep here. Yeah. Oh, I guess military school. They ain't playing that game. They ain't playing, no. they ain't playing the Star Wars game there. <laughs> it was all working on cars and uh, guns and stuff probably. Uh, or what well, was it? Uh, yeah, cleaning guns and sabers and swords. Sabers. <laughs> Every time you say saber, I think like, were you in the Middle East? Like, where, where were you? What kind of military school was this? It's like, no, okay, yeah, yeah. military so marine style swords and stuff. Sabers, yeah, the sabers like yeah. that. And then yeah, the I would uh, think that with saber you go lightsaber. It's like an instant. You're right in there. No, see the officers. Yeah, had the sabers, and then the uh, um, like sergeants stuff. They would have the swords. They start you off with like nerf swords. Nope. Ooh. No, no, they didn't start. They start you off like people were ching ching ching. <laughs> <laughs> So this this faith, right? It's not it's not just having faith in God generically, and it's not our faith, but it's yeah. faith in Christ that connects us to Him. Um, Acts twenty twenty one, uh, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And mm-hmm. even there, you can see that they're they're tied up together. Yeah, yeah. When when you believe, right, and knowing that Jesus had died for your sins, there mm-hmm. is still then should elicit that repentance. Yeah, right? that sorrow, that that knowing I I. I am sorry for my sins that you paid for. And I, pre- you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and, and I believe in you for, for what you've done. Uh, and people sometimes debate about this. Like, well, what comes first, faith or repentance? And, um, you know, for a lot of us, and I mean, let's assume everybody's thought about it a lot, but for a lot of us, we'd like, well, no, it's faith has to come first. Otherwise you don't even know you're not motivated to repent apart from mm-hmm. faith. Like mm-hmm. you've got to, mm-hmm. you got to apprehend Jesus. Um, but some people kind of, I think some people try to get those a little bit reversed. And I know like, and I'm not picking on on Johnny Mac here, but John MacArthur uh, sometimes gave the impression in a couple of his books, and I don't think he actually believes this, but he sometimes gave the impression in some of his dialogue over the uh, Lordship Salvation controversy, which was essentially an, an in-house argument among mostly dispensationals because uh, reform people didn't have to engage much in that because we believe that sanctif- sanctification necessarily follows uh, faith, mm-hmm. uh, justification, but... Um, but in that, he would sometimes give the impression like, well, you know, you really gave the impression. That's all I'm saying, guys. Okay, oh, that, here we go. Here we go. That he gave the impression that you you need to completely submit to the Lord. You've got to perfectly submit to the Lord. I know he doesn't believe that. Wow, slanderous. Okay, Why so would I you know. say that about him? I'm not saying that about him. He gave that impression. But some, wow. people, some people do think that. Apology tour coming up. You know, I don't do that. I, I, I don't do that. You're not gonna apologize for not for not for saying something mis- true. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's you. It's not true. He, he you gave, literally just said. I said he sometimes gave the impression, though he doesn't mm, believe this. Gave I, the I, impression. Don't, I, don't, I don't even believe the impression. Yeah, well, it's there. I don't read, think the impression. Read the gospel there. according to Jesus and faith works, which you have not read. Either I have not of. read. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, I think some people, you know, because we're so afraid of this sort of free grace. Um, anti-works positioned by some some Christians like oh you just believe in Jesus and it's just basically like a uh, an affirmation of Christ and there might be no sanctification there might be no commitment on your part you can accept Jesus as savior but not lord and uh and be on your merry way and John's right in saying like it doesn't really work that way you can't receive Jesus without receiving him as lord he yeah. is lord that's how it yeah. works um but faith comes first and it but I do think like you said it necessarily uh, translates into a, a repentance because 
once you believe, you now begin to love the things you maybe formerly hated, mm. and you and, you and you begin to hate the things you formerly loved. Right? Yeah, you're like, oh, this is I'm gross. Like this is an awful part of me. I need yeah. to. I, I, yeah, this has to go. You got. It's time to go. Not today, Satan. <laughs> not today. <laughs> that is. We do need to make a D and D shirt. Not today, Satan. Because that's a good phrase. I like it. it like, you know, like in, in our culture today, it's, it's pretty prevalent, right? Yes. But there is moments in my, during my week, it, it doesn't happen often. It does not happen often. But like all of a sudden I'll get hit with temptation. Yeah. Right. And I'll, I'll literally go, not today, Satan. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, huh. <laughs> I li- listen. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, 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 uh. It's, it's, it's pop culture taking uh, an aspect of the, the faith that is true and having a little bit of fun with it. But yeah, no, for us, it actually does mean something. I mean, he does, you know, we resist the devil and he mm-hmm. flees from us. Like we, we, we see this in scripture and having a conscious awareness of that, I think is uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden my phone rings and says, Mm-mm, don't <laughs> you stop it right now. It says Joe Thor. Stop it. <laughs> Just uh, mm, not today, Satan. <laughs> mm. Listen, I never call you with bad news. Do I ever call you with bad news? No, no, I don't say I can't think of Mm-mm. one time and that's not just because i don't know what's going on people okay (laughs) i call with good news good news you call me because you're in the car and you're bored that's when you call Uh, no because that's i finally have a moment yeah you're like hey what's going on i finally have a moment Mm -hmm. you're you're filling your time no yeah you know what actually here oh so you don't pay attention now so you don't pay attention Mm. to uh anything i've ever said with Mm. cg leaders no you 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 said this before i just i just think that you're using that as cover it's not cover Or let's my, say this: okay, my ride you, home is the fine is the opportunity where I could catch up with people. You're doing, and now you have a little bit longer ride home. Exactly. So but the problem is, is for me is like you're double dipping. How is it double dipping? Okay. So on the one hand, you're being efficient with your time. Yeah. But also, you do not want to drive home in silence. Oh no, I love it. No, you don't. Oh yes, I do. Uh, <gasps> I love it. Mm. So love you're it. so now you're saying that you're not only being efficient, you're sacrificing your own personal comfort. So you're super virtuous here in order to- I, I'm super, super okay, virtuous. Okay. Yes. I take it back then. Yeah. I was wrong. You should. <laughs> you should. That's my time where I catch up with people at the church. One of the, thing, one of the things that you know should be encouraging to us as we're going through this, and I know we, we think like, oh, we know this was saved by faith alone. Mm-hmm. Like we're Reformed Baptists. Um, but yeah, listen, we, we, we need to like revisit this again and celebrate it because we have been entrusted with this beautiful message. And it's different from any message in the world. Yeah. The message of the world is you're fine how you are. Embrace yourself in all of your misery and failure and shortcomings and just that's it. You should be able to rejoice in all of it. Um, You don't need to change. Or the other version is, hey, work hard, do your best, and you can become who you want to become by, by hard work. And there's a little bit of truth in each of those things. But we have this message that says, no, you're you are broken. You're, you're beautifully made. You're wonderfully made, but you're also broken and you are in need of redemption. And God says, I will give it all to you for free. I will make you into the person that you're supposed to be. I will make you whole and complete. I will forgive your sins and accept you as my child. All of this. And it is free. The mm. only condition is faith, right? We we receive the gift by faith. I, that, that message never, well, I shouldn't say it never gets old, right? Because unfortunately, unfortunately, it, for it, a lot of people, it, it does, right? And they won't say it's gotten old, no. But it's become routine. It's yeah. become it's become rote. It becomes, I mean, in the same way, uh, you take it for granted. You take it for granted, yeah. right? Like it, it, it's like as you're reading scripture, sometimes you've read the passage so many times that yeah. it's lost sort of that that sense of awe. Right? And you don't press into it. You don't give it attention. Mm-hmm. You don't reexamine yourself. But it is. It, it's it's. It's a beautiful message, and I think that when when we're gripped with how fascinating and beautiful and radical that message is, we're much more inclined to share it with people. Like, mm-hmm. wow, we because like think about it. If my message was try harder, do more, well, that's <laughs> you can only appeal to a certain segment of 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 the population, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you're and then you're stuck with how do I motivate them to do this? Like, it's all on you, and uh, and it's all on them. But when you say no, it's it's faith alone in Christ alone that it's it's all of grace it's all on God and all they have mm. to do is is believe but then you know repentance is obviously I, I always say it's the other side of the coin I'm not sure I'm not the first to say that like faith and repentance are two sides of the coin of conversion um when 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 you were converted was there 
one or two particular, and I'll go first, so I'm not, so you don't think I'm throwing you into the mm-hmm. bus. Were there one or two aspects where like repentance was obvious, like I, I'm not, I can't, this cannot be true of me anymore, or I've got to put this to death. So in my case, the big ones were, well, I, I stopped the, my moderate drug use. Um, I was not full blown crazy, uh, but you know, a lot of speed, which I didn't consider a drug because I didn't smoke it. So I felt like, you know, it's medicine. I felt like that was, uh, <laughs> that's how it, in my mind, I was like, that's fine. I'll take I it speed. <laughs> Black Beauties, White Cross, whatever. Um, a little bit of weed, but I didn't really care. And back then- Mixed with some hot liquor. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Um, now, I, back then, like weed wasn't as powerful as it is today. <laughs> so like in the 80s. So like you could smoke a little bit and be like, eh, whatever. So I didn't really care. Um, but I, I knew I had to put that away. Um, I knew I had to put swearing away and that was really hard for me. Not just swearing, but like I was genuinely profane in the way that I spoke to people and about people. But honestly, the biggest thing was, was not finding, not defining myself based on worldly values. And everybody does this, but for me, I know this sounds superficial and dumb and not important, but for me, I literally, I genuinely and literally derived a sense of who I was from the music that I listened to. The mm. music was good, mm. most of it, some of it was bad. Um, but I, I I, really saw like, that's me, this defines me. And so um, I, I had, and in my case, I actually had to get rid of all my music because I couldn't even engage it without falling into a kind of idolatry. So in my case, um, I had to get rid of all of my music and uh, I started listening to Christian music. <laughs> Petra and stuff like that um, until I was able to get a better grasp on it. But, you know, for some people, you know, it's uh, sexual immorality, of course, you know, you lay that aside. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was probably the, the biggest thing was just more of an identity issue. Mm. Was there anything in particular in, in your context and in, in your age when you were? Well, I mean, look at the time. We got to kind of move on here, Joe. <laughs> Jimmy so as like, we're talking really. about, so repentance, right? Yeah, you had to repent and let go of those things. And then with diligent use of all the outward beads. So like the means of grace. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, you, you can do that to me because I didn't really embarrass myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it I doesn't know. work. It's not as fun. Yeah, it, it is fun. But if you go back to episode one. No, stop. If you want to see how this is done properly, <laughs> episode one. That's how you do it, people. That's how you do what Jimmy just tried to do. <laughs> You let somebody bear their soul, become super vulnerable, take their shell off, and it's just just quaking with all their nerves exposed. And then you're like, yeah, cool. I'm going to keep my shell on. (laughs) All right. So what are we talking about? The outward use. Um, So yeah, with the diligent use of all outward outward means, means, outward means whereby Christ communicated to us the benefits of redemption. I mean, as you just kind of said, the means of grace, right? Uh, But here, Proverbs 2, 1 to 6. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver Mm -hmm. and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So uh, we were our our salvation, right, is Mm -hmm. is based. To escape the wrath of the curse. uh, of God due to us for sin, God required faith in Jesus Christ and repentance, right? Yep. But there is still that sense of like, we follow his commands, yeah. right? And, and we treasure them we, because his ways are good. Yes. Yeah. And think about it. Like the, the means of grace, <clears throat> they they help us to find Christ. Yeah. Right. So it's like, okay, so we have the Lord's Supper and baptism and you know, corporate worship, of course, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. reading of the word, all that. So all the means of grace they help us to grow, but they help us to grow and to become and to walk in God's ways yeah. by helping us to find Christ. So even then, like the means of grace are ultimately what lead to our conversion, right? It's 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 the preaching of the word. Like that's a means of grace. You're, mm-hmm. No one's converted apart from the means of grace. So you got to hear the word preached. People are praying for you. We have people in this church that were praying for me before I was converted uh, just a couple years ago. No, oh, um, gosh, but they knew me back in the day. So. That's, I mean, that's what's great about it is the means of grace lead you to Christ. Mm-hmm. And then we keep seeking, we keep learning, we keep growing. So we keep going back to them. But we talked a little bit about this. Like, so the means of grace, so, you know, prayer, scripture, worship, and we, we've talked a lot about those things. Um, those things, for some people, they get to a place where they're like, you know what, I'm trying to use the means of grace 
and I don't really, nothing, I'm just, nothing's happening. I'm not feeling it. Hmm. What do you say to somebody when they say like, hey, man, I'm, I'm reading my Bible and I'm praying, but uh, I don't really feel like I'm, I'm finding Christ in them. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few things I would say. I'd say maybe, uh, well, one, don't stop. Like, keep pressing in, right? Uh, keep pressing in. But then maybe it might, for a season, you need to be reading it with someone and having a conversation with someone uh, as you're going about it. I think that's good. I, I think that I know I know I know my wife one time when we were dating, she was sharing with me a, a, a devotional literature. And this guy was saying, like, hey, man, if you're not benefiting from reading the word, just take a break from reading the word. Uh, no. And I, I, I remember, you know, and at the time, you know, we were, we were freshly dating. And so I was really sensitive. I think I said something like that's dumb. Um, <laughs> no, I actually didn't. Uh, because I understand his sensitivity. You something you need to change something up, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you said, it may be as simple as well. Maybe bring somebody in it with yeah. you, uh, or maybe you can change up the way in which you're engaging. So if it's the intake of God's word, I did for a whole year. Uh, this was back. I, this was 14 years ago. Um, I, I instead of reading the word for my devotional time in the morning, I listened to the word. So I would open up my ESV uh, browser mm -hmm. and I would hit play, and it would play uh, the scripture. And, uh, and so I would frequently read it as, along, but most of the time in my devotional habits for that year, I just listened to it. And so I'm still taking in the word. I'm still meditating it. Boy, it did flip it on me. It was mm -hmm. really helpful because I'm a guy who in his devotional habits, they, I go through this cycle of, wow, this is awesome. I'm meeting with the Lord to it's kind of hard work to mm -hmm. huh, I'm not really feeling it. It feels stale. And somewhere in there is when I go, okay, so what am I going to do to change things up in my interaction with the means of grace to help me to see that what I am feeling isn't what's real? Because what I'm feeling is the means of grace aren't working, mm -hmm. which isn't true. Mm -hmm. It's that's, that's my experience of it. So maybe if I shift to a different way of doing it, it'll help me to see it. No, the means of grace are not the problem. My, the problem is in myself. Yeah. And so I think that's, so you get some, bring somebody else in. Yep. Uh, maybe, maybe listen to the word for a period of time. Yeah. Try that. I think that could be good. Um, try a different translation. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're not translating the Greek and Hebrew on your own, which 99% of us aren't, mm -hmm. um, then yeah, maybe a, a good translation, you know, shift from, uh, I don't know, you know, ESV to NASB or try the old NIV or, or uh, what's the Southern yeah. Baptist one? C C Christian Standard Bible, yeah. yeah, Christian Standard Bible, whatever. Um, I think that's good. That, that's a good thing to do. Hmm. What else? What else? What are some other ways that that you would encourage somebody to to change it up in their interaction? Because, like you said, don't stop. Yeah, don't stop. But find a different way. Uh, I mean, I think that's where journaling also helps. Totally, right? totally. Agree. Is as you're you're reading, uh, then just start journaling about it. Just what, I, and it might even just be. For at the beginning, you're kind of just recapping what you just read. Yeah. That's fine. That's okay. That's good. You're going to find that over time as you're journaling, you're going to start asking yourself questions. You're going to, mm -hmm. you're going to hit like a certain word is going to stick out to you or a phrase. Uh, and you're just, you're going to be fixated on that, mm -hmm. you know, as you're journaling. And I, I find um, journaling to be in incredibly helpful. Yeah. Because it, it's it makes you slow down and consider what you're reading. Yeah. Because if 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 it's stale, if your devotional habits are stale, then you might be okay. I'm gonna pray, and you pray to the Lord, and you know, maybe it's a brief time, and then you read the Word, mm -hmm. and you just read it, and then you move on. But journaling makes you take extra time to either write it out yep. or to summarize it. Yep. And it's in other words, it forces the act of meditation. Right. So it's like you can read without meditating, but as soon as you start journaling, now you are meditating. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the, the more you do it, the better you get at it. I think that's really, that's really good too. I think um, asking people to pray for you in the midst of it is important. Uh, I mean, always asking people to pray for you, but, uh, but especially if you're set, if you're feeling weak um, or tired, mm -hmm. I made, I was, um, this was really cool. So I was uh, teaching the ladies, we had a women's ministry thing and they wanted me to come and talk about discipleship. So I came in and, uh, and mansplained. I man yeah, because, you know, I don't think you guys really, I think what you mean, <laughs> ladies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember Michelle was like, yeah, we're going to be, because uh, she's part of the women's ministry yeah. leadership, you know. She was like, yeah, we're going to have uh, Joe come in and, and talk about discipleship. I go, huh, need the man to come explain it, huh? 
<laughs> Do you need me to come talk about evangelism? <laughs> I gotta say, they weren't as silent as they should have been as well. Their husbands weren't there. They should be asking them to stop that. No, it was uh, it was a really good time. We you had, better uh, watch out. Someone's gonna write about you and your patriarchy. Oh, they could. They could. <laughs> yeah. Just, you, just, just, just go. Just go hang out at the cigar shop, Joe. Yeah. Well, listen. You you. <laughs> He, yeah. he finally I, I was like, what, what are you talking, talking about? about? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Haters always hate. Yeah, they're always out there. You want to see the patriarchy, how it works in my life? Just come to my house. Just come to my house and just. And watch Jen. Just, just watch Mow Jen the lawn. <laughs> fix fix the no, I'm I mow the lawn or Eli mows the lawn. She doesn't mow the lawn. Come on. Bro. Yeah. I'm texting. Go ahead. Go ahead. I dare you. Um, no, you just you'll you'll just see that uh, there ain't no patriarchy. Oh, Lord, there ain't no patriarchy. So, what I was gonna say is about the I was at the women's thing, right? Uh huh. Good going. And um, uh, I was I was talking about discipleship, and in the midst of there somewhere, I mean, I don't even remember because it wasn't planned, but I was talking about somehow we got onto an aspect of of being discouraged or whatever, and how discipleship in its various environments and relationships helps. Uh, I talked about how like I really w ha struggled with some depression. And, uh, you know, not, not like clinical depression, like, but like I'm just depressed, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Melancholy. And uh, I shared some of that. And, um, one, one of the ladies emailed me this week. Oh. And she said, Hey, um, it, it was, it was, it was, it was really, it was, it was Jenna. And she okay. said, Hey, you mentioned this. And, uh, I just wanted, you know, I really appreciated that you shared that. That was, that was really awesome. And, um, you know, I know what that's like. And I just want you to know we're praying for you. Mm, and if we can so be of any encouragement to you, you know, her and her husband, they were like, you know, mm. I man, like it was super encouraging. We got super, great people. We have awesome yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, too bad you let them down by hanging out at the cigar shop all the time. <laughs> First of all, I'm never at the cigar I shop. I know, people. I know. That's the, I just. Okay. <laughs> I am always smoking. That's that you can call that's me a, out on that, that. That's a fair. That's a fair thing there. That I'm there is there is. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Let's see. When am I not smoking? When I'm sleeping, unless I fall asleep with a cigar. Unless you fall asleep with <laughs> a cigar. But that has happened. I think there's a picture of me coming home with a bunch of the guys from Redeemer, the elders, and everybody. We're leaving. We're coming back from T4G. I got a cigar in my mouth or in my hand in the back seat asleep. That has happened. I wonder if we were doing that when we went to the for the church. No, this was this was this was like a together for the gospel. She says Eli. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he can't do it. Last time he did it all, he didn't do a great job. I gotta I gotta I gotta fix it up. Hey guys, you know what? Um if you want to escape the wrath of God, you gotta believe. Mm. You gotta repent. And that doesn't happen apart from the means of grace. You wanna grow? Man, you, you gotta gotta make use of all of it. It's all a gift that God has given us. We experience it, and so now we are entrusted with this beautiful message that we get to go out and encourage fellow brothers and sisters, but also the lost in the world. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You could follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can send it for the email blast at the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. We got that fresh pod every Monday and Thursday. We got blog posts, video content over at the website and we've got our all access exclusive content you got banter truth on tuesdays weekday wisdom monday through friday head on over to drvotion.com slash all access to register today later